the Donald, Mr. Donald Trump, uh, with us uh, this morning. And, uh, Mr. Trump, good to have you with us. Well, Steve, I could never fire you. Your ratings are too good. <laughs> i got to tell you, though. Your group would not hear of it. Normally, I would... ratings, it would be easy, <laughs> but your ratings are too strong. Normally, I would have you in studio, but after you fired Ms. Gotti, I don't want to get that close to you just for a uh, little while. You well, know what I mean? Courage. <laughs> that did. Gloria Gotti took a lot of courage. I, I do agree with that. Hey, John Rich is a great buddy of mine. Oh, and great. And, and says so many, many great things about, about your son your daughter, your whole family. And, and I got to tell you, have, have been a huge fan for a long time. Um, it, do you have as much fun on the show as it looks like you do? Well, I do. And, you know, it was a great success as The Regular Apprentice. And then we switched it up. It, it became the number one show on television. And then we switched it up to Celebrity. And I like it more because, you know, I've, not that I know these people, but I've known of them. And some are great characters and some aren't. And, you know, we have lots of different people. But I find it much more interesting for me personally uh, the show does great. It's in season 12. It's nine years, if you can believe it. And it was supposed to be a one-year little wonder. It was supposed to be on for a little while. It was a filler. And it started at number 10, and NBC called me. They said, a strange thing happened. The show's at number 10. The next week it went to 8. Then it went to 5. Then it ultimately it went to the number one show on television. And they called up and said, we want to renew immediately. You know, It's a simple business, your business. If you get good ratings, they want to renew. If you don't, they don't even talk to you. Nobody is better at branding than you are, the whole Trump brand. Are you surprised that some of the celebrities who come in don't understand that they are either helping or hurting their own personal brand by how they behave on the show. Well, I think they go in wanting to help their brand. I mean, you know, it's sort of interesting. You have like a Dennis Rodman who who was uh, an unbelievable character for us, but you know, you look at some of his antics and you say, "Why is he doing that?" But a lot of them, I think all of them go in for their charity, but also because they want to help their brand. And I think that's the reason that they work so hard to be honest with you, Steve. They they were, you know, I often wonder why some of them are very successful people like, uh, you know, Penn Jillette. I mean, he makes millions of dollars a year in Las Vegas. And I really think they go in wanting to help their brand. And I think that's why they work so hard, because some of these people are working 20 hours a day. It's, it's not easy. Well, and some of them are not really known out of their niche, uh, like a John Rich, you know, not really known out right. of country music. His brand exploded, Marley, uh, as well. I mean, you've had some people who have literally exploded their brand thanks to your show. Well, John Rich is a great example because, you know, John was somebody that I, you know, I didn't know John well. I've heard of him. I like his music, but I didn't really know John well. And I wouldn't have picked John early, early on. I would have said, you know, well, we have some characters that are great. You know, sometimes that's the thing you can never tell. I look at some of these people, I say, star, they're going to win, and they turn out to be stiffs. So, John, I didn't see it. And every week he got better and better, and you realized how smart. You know, he's a very smart guy. And at the end, I'll tell you, Marley was fantastic, but at the end, I chose John Rich. And John Rich has been a great winner. I mean, he's been terrific. But he's got a lot of friends. You know, as soon as I picked John, I got calls <laughs> like from people like you. But John has a lot of friends. He's a great guy. Well, and, and guys like Trace Adkins and John. I oh, noticed yeah. you didn't pick any By country way, music people one. this week. I mean, you, you didn't pick any country music folks this time because the country music folks are winning it all the time. I know, I know. You know, Trace Adkins is phenomenal. And I didn't know about Trace. I, you know, a lot of people, Trace was not nearly as famous. He became well-known because, you know, his record or his album went to number one while he was on the show. And before that, a lot of people didn't know about Trace. I've gotten to know Trace, and I'll tell you, he is quality. He is really quality. Well, I think that's one of the things people like is they get to see these people outside their element. And right. in many cases, again, they, they elevate their brand. They elevate their reputation. Well, I just wish I could get a piece of the upside from Trace and from John Rich. I'd like to get like 20% of the upside. You know, I'd make a lot of money. It would be really good. But it's a little bit, I don't have the courage to ask them, you know. But but they really have gotten, I mean, when you do well on Celebrity Apprentice like those two, I mean, there's a tremendous upside. Joan Rivers is another one. I mean, she was sort of a comedian that it was over. And now she's the highest paid comedian there is. I mean, she's making a lot of money. And, you know, she did phenomenally. She was 76 and she had more energy than the athletes or anybody else. So it's been a really, it's been a lot of fun, Celebrity Apprentice. Well, and I love the fact, man, you don't want any quit. You don't want any back down. No. I mean, you don't want anybody to show any weakness. And I think that, again, is, is also how it has to work in the real business world. Well, it is, and and I think this is really a little a little bit of a microcosm of the real world. And I talk about loving what you do, but I also talk you never ever quit. And I wanted to make it clear, like last night with George, that you're not quitting because he did make the case that you know he should be the one to go. 
but he didn't do it in the form of a quitter. He did it because he was the project manager, and the other guys really didn't do anything wrong. And but, the respect he had for his for his teammates. And you're not seeing any quitting these presidential candidates either. I mean, you know, you've got Mitt Romney, you got Newt Gingrich, you got Rick Santorum. We we got a chance to travel a little bit with uh, with some of the Gingrich folks over the weekend. Have right. spent time on the campaign trail. It right. is a brutal, rigorous business. Tough. These guys yeah. are working hard out there. It's a tough business. Well, I was thinking about doing it, and I can t- and I loved it in a certain sense. I really loved it, and I was leading in the polls, and I was doing good. But, you know, ultimately I have such a, a lot of things. And I saw something in Mitt Romney that I really liked. I think that, you know, I'm a big fan of doing something against China because China is laughing at us, I will tell you that. And they are really, Steve, they are laughing all the way to the bank. And, and they're increasing their military budget now 11% while oh, yeah. we're gutting ours. Yeah, we're gutting ours. And, and, you know, they're taking our jobs. They're manipulating the currency. Their, their currency is so highly manipulated that it makes it almost impossible for our companies to compete. Uh, they, by the way, you know, we talk about fair trade, They, uh, which is a nice word, not free trade, fair trade. But unfortunately, we don't use that word very often. But, you know, what they've done is they've made it very, very difficult to do business in China for our companies, and yet they dump their stuff to, on us. I will say this. If we don't do something about China, we're rebuilding China. And the one person that really gets it is Mitt Romney. He gets it. He gets OPEC. Look at OPEC. Eleven guys sitting around the table. In this case, all guys. I don't have to worry about the woman because the women say, oh, you should say men and what? Believe me, it's all guys. And they sit around the table, and they manipulate the price of your, your gasoline in Tennessee. And by the way, I love Tennessee. You know, I have a great relation to Tennessee because of Trump Tower, because a company, and I, I love it, a company named Genesco. I don't even know yeah, yeah. if they're too active, but they were in Nashville, Tennessee. I went there many times, and they owned the Trump Tower site. So when I built Trump Tower, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, dealing with Genesco. I bought the site from them, and they owned Bonwit Teller. So I love Nashville. Well, we Tennessee. need to get you in for a visit. You need to get back here and uh, and see us sometime. Well, I I, I think John it's Rich great. will host you over at the house. He's got a spare bedroom. Well, I I'll bet John <laughs> John it must be very nice to me. One thing I know about the winners, they always they speak well of me. Every one of them, they like Trump. So John Rich would be uh, that would be a good one to stay with. I if guess. Mitt Romney wins, any chance that uh, that the Donald will have a role in a uh, in a Romney administration? Well, I don't know, but I I can tell you this that it's so important that we change this country around. This country is uh, the lack of incentive we have. The potential of this country is so enormous, and we're not using it. We're just not using it. And, you know, the, the, the fighting, the, I've never seen it like this. I've always been in politics, you know, usually on the other side, but I've always been involved in politics. The hatred the Republicans and the Democrats have for each other, I've never seen anything like it. And, you know, years ago, they talk, and then they go out to lunch together. Today, there's no lunches. There's legitimate, I mean, it's so fractionalized. And but part are, of that is because the issues are, are so the, divided. I mean, there's yeah, no so middle divided. ground on some of this stuff of either going to go socialist, almost communist uh, economic policies versus the free market. There's no middle ground for that. Well, they can't even agree on bills where they all agree on it. I mean, they have bills where everyone agrees it's the right thing to do, and they can't vote on it. It's like incredible. There's no leadership at the top. We have so you'd no fire leadership. most of them. I mean, you know, Grant, you would put them at the table, and you would fire most of them. Well, you get well. You what you do is <laughs> before you fire them, you get them in a room, and you say, "Fellas, look, you know, we got to get the country going again." And believe me, you're going to have another dip, and you're going to have a dip probably caused by oil prices, because in my opinion, the big one that we had four four years ago, more than the banks, and I'm no fan of the banks, by the way, because they're not doing a good job. But more than the banks, the oil price is what started the so-called depression, because it was a depression four years ago. One of the reasons I was excited about you getting in the race and running is because you tell it like it is. People want that. I do want you just to give us the Barack Obama you're fired, because I wanted you to win just so you could turn to him on Inauguration Day and say it. So say it for us now. Well, Steve, I'll only do it for you, and I will say this. Obama, you're fired. I love it. Have a good time. See you soon, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted him to get elected just for that, and we got it anyway. So there we go. We're back in a moment. This is the Steve Gill Show. Dollar bill, y'all. Come on, that bill.